Hello everyone, welcome again. This is the second part of my uh, uh, association rules tutorial. In this video, I'm going to explain the a priori algorithm, how it works and what it does. The contents in this video are adapted from some of some of them are adapted from Professor Saisai's material. Some others are adapted from the this paper you see in front of you. And by the way, you can find a list of uh, several association rule algorithms. And in this video, as I said, I'll, I'll be, I will only be explaining the a priori algorithm. Now, from my previous video on association rules, we mentioned that we can consider uh, uh, I as a set of all items in a store, so item 1, item 2, all the way to item M. The store has M items. And then we have a database transaction or a transaction database, T, which has all the transactions, T1, T2, all the way to Tn, N transactions we have in the database, where every Ti of these has one or more items from I. So every TI has one or more items of I and every transaction in the dataset is given a transaction ID TID. The a priori algorithm. It's used to mine item sets from transaction databases for Boolean association rules. Remember Boolean association rules. We'll come to that in the next video. Now we have a, a, a concept here that we need to remember. The, this algorithm is based on the idea that a subset of a frequent item set must also be a frequent item set. A frequent item set, and any subset of it, must also be a frequent item set. We'll come to that when we give an example, but just remember this. For example, if we have uh, an item set which has two items, item 1 and item 1, item 2, and it's a frequent item set, then the subset of item 1 and the subset of item 2, both of them are f considered frequent item sets. It's an iterative approach, so it runs through several iterations to find frequent item sets, and um, it uses the frequent item sets to generate association rules. So, so what it does is it uses a level-wise search where we use we have k item sets, lists of k item sets, and we use them to explore item sets of larger size, larger by one, so k plus one item sets, always larger by one. We increase the size by one of each of item sets in this algorithm. The frequent subsets are extended one item at, at a time. This step is known as candidate generation process. The, then groups of, of candidates are tested against the data. We'll come to what that means in the example. It identifies the frequent individual items in the database and extends, extends them to larger and larger item sets as long as those item sets appear sufficiently often in the database. So we extend them by one. We extend them Every step by one, we'll come to that in the example as we mentioned. And the prior algorithm determines frequent item sets that can be used to determine association rules. So we need to extract the frequent item sets first, and then they can be used to determine association rules. Now, from Professor, Professor Said Said's material, uh, this algorithm takes advantage of the fact that any subset of a frequent item set is also a frequent sub, uh, item set. We mentioned that, and we were just repeating it for to, to keep remembering it in the algorithm. The algorithm can therefore reduce the number of candidates being considered by only exploring the item sets whose support count is greater than the minimum support count. Now for the support count we spoke about in the last video, we can uh, use it uh, as a fraction, uh, uh, we can have a support minimum support count as a fraction between 0 and 1, and then what we do is we divide the frequency of items by the size of the transaction database, we divide by n. If we use the, the minimum support count as an integer number, then we only compare it against the frequency of items rather than the frequency divided by the size of the um, transaction data database. All infrequent item sets can be pruned. So we have a concept of pruning here. We'll come to what it means in the example. So the infrequent item sets, we prune them um, if they have an infrequent subset. So when we do the subset idea, this idea here, if any of these subsets is infrequent, then that can also be should also be considered infrequent. As I said, the example will make things much clearer. So again, just in plain English, how do we do it? We build a candidate list of k item sets. A k item set, by the way, is an item set that has k items. So we build a candidate list candidate list and then we extract a frequent list. We need to be building two lists at every iteration. Now for the frequent list I'll be using fi as a frequent item set for uh, just as a, an abbreviation. In textbooks sometimes you find 
L rather than F it's just the same thing um, after that we use the frequent list of K item sets after we extract the frequent list to determine the candidate and frequent list of K plus 1 as we mentioned we uh, 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 um, increase the size always by 1 at each iteration and then we use pruning in the middle of this uh, idea of, of step of determining the candidate and frequent list of size k plus 1 from frequent list of size k. We, we keep repeating until we end up with either an empty candidate list or a frequent list. If one of them is empty then we stop there, that's the stopping condition for the algorithm and then we return the frequent list of k minus 1 because our current list can be empty so we return the list the frequent list from the previous iteration enough talking I know too much text let's have a look at an example for things to make sense let's assume that we have a transaction database that has five transactions the size is five in the first transaction that's transaction ID we have three items one three four second transaction two three five and as you can see the, these are the items in each transaction and the first step we build a list of item sets of size 1, so k here is 1 and we have 5 items, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as you can see and we count them in the uh, in the transaction data database, how much, how many times do they appear 1 appears 3 times, 2 appears 3 times and so on and so forth and then let's assume that our minimum support count equals 2 then we need to remove any item sets with a support count less than that, notice not less than or equal less than that that's why for item 4 for that item set of which has the item number 4 that's red because 1 is less than the minimum support count so we remove it and that's our frequent item set from the first iteration it only has 1, 2, 3, 5 with their support count so that's the very, the very first step the first iteration it's nice and easy in the second iteration we extend now this frequent item set by 1 as we said we extend it by one uh, at every iteration. The way we do that is we find all combinations of size k plus 1, k here is 1. So we find all combinations from these items, from the items from the frequent item, item set, uh, as we said, of size k plus 1. So we want, uh, by the way, regardless of the order. So the order of the items is not important. So we can say 1, 2, or 2 and 1 are the same. So we build 1, 2, 1, 3. 1, 5, 2, 3, 2, 5, and 3, 5, as you can see here. And then what we do is we build the k plus 1 item set, a uh, list of our items, and then we count their appearance now in the original transactional database. The 1 and 2 it only appears once, as you can see there. 1, 3 appears 3 times, 1 there, 1 there, 1 there, and we count the appearance of these uh, item sets of these combinations in the transaction database. Now, again, minimum support count is 2. Anything less than that should be removed. That's why that one is red. So we remove that and we end up with the frequent item set in the second iteration looking like this. 1, 3 appears 3 times, 1, 5 appears 2 times, and so on and so forth. Again, nice and easy. Now, in the next step, again, we need to extend the size by 1. So we increase k. Uh, k here is 2, then k becomes three and then we find all possible combinations of size three regardless of the order i.e. the order is not important what that means is we can have one three five one two three one two five um two three five and what else yeah also we'll end up with four uh, uh, co combinations yes again we do the combinations one two three one two five one three five one two three five and and now we we use the pruning step. What that means is we uh, find all combinations from each item set of these now. We find all combinations of size k minus 1. You may ask why didn't we do it here? Because 1, 2, we can break it down to 1 and 2. Well, we've done that in the first step. We've handled 1 and 2 in the first step, in the first step anyway. So that's why we don't do it there. And here we only break it down to uh, uh, subsets of size k minus 1 i.e. k here is 3 so we only have uh, every, every subset will be of size 2 1, 2 and 1, 3 we don't do 1 on its own to its own why because we've handled these in the first step anyway so what we do is we break it down to 
a smaller subset of size k minus 1 again and we check those now, we check the new subsets in the frequent item set from the previous iteration. Notice, not in the candid item set, but in the frequent item set from the previous iteration. So let's have a look at those subsets. So for the first item set, we can have 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. For the second one, 1, 2, 1, 5, 2, 5, and so on and so forth. For the four of them, for these four guys, yes? Now, we check these as we mentioned, in the frequent item set I need to have this in the frequent item set from the previous uh, step so this, yeah, in the, in the, from the previous step, I hope that makes sense we check each of these in the frequent item set from the previous uh, from the previous step so, 1, 2, is it there? the answer is no, so if any of them remember, if any of these subset subsets is not in the frequent item set from the previous step then we remove that item set so 1, 2 is not there, immediately remove it no, that's why it's right, we remove that 1, 2, 5, 1, 2 is not there yes, it's not there, so that's why it says no, we remove it for 1, 3, 5, 1, 3 is there 1, 5 is there 3, 5 is there, likewise for 2, 3, 5 all of these combinations, all these subsets are in the frequent item set from the previous step that's why we keep them that's how pruning works now, well, after pruning now, we end up with these guys, with these two item sets, and now we count how many times they appear, that com those combinations ap appear in the original transaction database. So now we ca count the support count, 135 appears twice, 1 there, 1 there, 235 also twice, 1 there, and 1 there, and those two values are equal uh, the equal the minimum support count so we keep them remember support count we said it should be less than the minimum support count rather than less than or equal after that now what we want to do now we increase them by one i.e. we find all possible combinations of these items of size 4 because now k is 3 of size k plus 1 so the only combinations as you can see we will have in, in this step now is 1, 3, 1, 2, 3 and 5 if today's set was larger uh, then we end up with larger frequent item sets then we just try to do the combinations in the same way I'm just keeping things simple here but things work in the same way if the database was much larger now we build the combination 1, 2, 3 and 5 and then if, if we try to count the support count how many times that combination appears in the, in the original database then it only appears once i.e. it's less than the minimum support count so we remove it we end up with an empty candidate item set in the fourth iteration what that means is we will have an empty uh, frequent item set i.e. we rem so we stop there and we return the frequent item set from the first step i.e. we return this one here but let's assume that the count was large enough and then we move on now to the pruning step i.e. we break that down into smaller subsets of size k minus 1 so k here is 4 we need subsets of k minus 1 size, so size k minus 1, so 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, 5, 2, 3, 5, and then we check these now in the frequent item set from the previous step. Are they there or not? So you can see them here. 1, 2, 3 is not there, so again we remove that anyway. So that will be removed anyway, and we will end up with an empty frequent item set from the, pre from, uh, the fourth iteration, and therefore we stop there and return the frequent item set from the previous iteration which is 3 third iteration and we have now this frequent uh, uh, item set I hope that makes sense so the, now the algorithm stops and returns this list in the next video we'll learn now how to use that to extract association rules uh, which are usually used for maybe recommendation systems and for uh, uh, a supermarket layout design or for catalog design and other purposes in general for market basket analysis. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.